everybody, Matt Kleskowski here. Episode number two of Your Photo, Our Look. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because I want to get right into it, but uh, the ba the basic premise is, and you can read about it on the website, is we take your photos and I edit them. So I always learn something when somebody edits my photo, I see a different style. Uh, we found it's really popular. So I'm not going to put names or anything like that so you can remain anonymous, but um, feel free to submit photos on the, the website where there's a link there and uh, we'll try to get to them. I want to get to as many as possible. I want to be respectful of your time and not give you a 30 minute video. So I'm just going to jump right into it. Uh, most everything's going to start inside a Lightroom. I'll probably tweak the white balance a little bit. I do all my, my toning and color balance in Lightroom, and then I'll jump to perfect effects uh, or any of the, the on one programs if I need to. Photoshop if I need to as well, but uh, we'll stick to Lightroom as much as we can here. Uh, I've got a little bit of cropping to do on here. I would go ahead and uh, just take your straighten tool. There's an auto option in Lightroom 6 slash CC. And by the way, this is, I try not to train too much in this and just do more of overall workflow. So uh, I just want to show you uh, the workflow. It looks a little bit maybe overcorrected there. So we'll tweak it back a little bit. I'm going to crop in quite a bit too. And uh, really kind of get that chair as a, as a star of the photo down here. There's nothing going on, nothing going on over here on the, the right side, nothing going on on the bottom. And honestly, if I could crop away all that seaweed stuff, I would, but I can't. Uh, a lot of people say, you know, the horizon line centered. I don't care. You know, this is a place where you can break that rule uh, because I think we have a, a stronger element down here and I'd rather focus on that. Uh, warmed up the photo a little bit. Go down here, option or alt click on whites. I'm not going to go all the way. I'm just going to push it a little bit. I don't want to make that sky too bright. And then optional alt click on blacks, move it to the left, get a good black point. Hit the backslash key. You can see that's before, um, that's after. Might pull back on the whites just a little bit, pull back on some of the highlights, just regain some area there. Open up those shadows in the foreground here, so that's looking good. We can boost up the saturation. You don't want to go radioactive with it, but just a little bit here. And then I would take the graduated filter, bring the exposure down, and uh, just maybe darken that sky. That's going to be too dark, so I'm just going to pull that back up. All right, just to darken a little bit, maybe even add a little bit more saturation to it. Okay, so that's before, that's after inside of Lightroom. Um, I know I'm only going to use Perfect Effects, so I'm just going to jump right into edit inside of Perfect Effects. Normally, and I'll show you in another one, uh, there's another workflow. If you think you're going to use multiple, uh, multiple apps from on one, then you can go into a different way. Not too much I'm going to do here. I'm going to add some contrast, a little bit of color, and a vignette, and we'll be done. Uh, so I've got a preset that I like. If I go under the presets section and I go under landscape, there's one under here called summer. So that's a nice one. Just gives an, I really like that one on this photo, by the way. Uh, hit the backslash key. That's before, that's after. Overall glow and a nice just warm color on there. I'm going to add another one here. We'll go back to filters and I'm going to go to dynamic contrast, click on natural, and then just reduce the opacity. I don't need it to be too contrasty. And then one more to finish up, we will go to the popular big softy vignette. All right. It's going to put a vignette around the edges. Uh, I'll probably reduce the opacity just a hair here. And I'll come down here and we can also change the center. I actually don't mind it there, but I can also change the center point more toward over here. And I'll just draw a little bit more attention, but I'm actually gonna undo. I don't mind it too much around the edges. I don't mind that getting dark and this getting a little darker down here. So I'm gonna leave it, hit apply. This is gonna bring us right back over into Lightroom. Uh, one of the things that I didn't do uh, before was sharpen. Um, I would have done my sharpening probably inside of Lightroom. So even on the, the edited file, it doesn't matter. I can come down here to the detail panel, uh, zoom in, and uh, add a little bit of sharpness on there. It's got a little bit of graininess to it. If I printed this out, you would never see it. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. Uh, radius about 1.4. That looks pretty good. Okay, so let's take a look here and uh, ooh, let's take a look. I want to reset all my settings on the original. Okay, so now we got, that's our before image and that is our after image. Okay, uh, let's see here. So let's move on. Next one here, do some quick edits on a portrait. Um, 
you know, I, I, the only thing I would say, I don't want this to be a critique show. I would say if you have, whoever this is, if you have another version of this where the people are looking at the photo, that'd be even better. Um, you got one person looking off this way, one person, neither person is connecting with, with the photo. So, uh, so you don't always need both, but at least one would be good. Um, overall, I'm going to bump up the exposure here. I'm not going to do too much more inside of Lightroom. Uh, I am going to go take the graduated filter. I like the glow back here. Uh, what I'm going to do is bring the exposure up and take the grad filter from that side and maybe even from this side, but maybe make it a little bit brighter. And I just like that glow up top there. It looks pretty cool to me. So we'll close that up. I might reduce the exposure a little bit just to retain a little bit more of that color back there. And then I can always just take the adjustment brush and paint right on the faces just to brighten those up a little bit. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. I will go ahead and go down here, do a little bit of sharpening crank up the sharpen. Remember, you got to be into 100% to see it. About 1.4. I'm going to hit a little masking on this, and what it'll do is it'll mask it away from the smoother skin area, so it just hits the details. I'll also crop the photo here. We'll bring that in. Um, I think we can crop a decent amount here. We can even crop off a little bit of her head, and that'll work just fine, and maybe move it over. All right, looking good. Let's go, uh, I'm gonna do some quick, uh, I'm gonna go through the file plugin extras because um, I wanna go into perfect layers. If I go into perfect layers first, I can use multiple modules here. So if I go into perfect layers, I could do any layer related things that I needed. Uh, but what it's also gonna let me do is jump into perfect portrait. And once we're there, we will select her face and just tweak any of the, huh. You know, it's funny because I practiced this before and it actually found her eye just fine. Uh, but this time it seems like it's a little bit, uh, it was a little bit cranky. So I'll just tweak the eye. And you know, some people could redo the video, but not me. Let's move the center point. All right. And uh, mouth, we'll just... Got most of it, we'll just readjust the lip just a little tiny bit here. Okay, I always like the defaults, so I'm not gonna mess with them too much. I'm actually gonna leave the defaults. Uh, that's before, that's after. It does, a, it does a nice job. Only thing I'll probably do is just grab my retouch brush. Um, I do this all the time, bring the opacity way down, like 40, 50%, and I'll just paint right under the eyes. Uh, just to remove that a little bit. Don't leave the opacity up at 100% because it'll look crazy fake. Now let's jump to perfect effects. And we'll go in here, add a little bit more warmth to it. So I'll go to the sunshine filter, uh, a little bit of sunshine. See, it kind of just adds a little bit of warmth, a little bit of glow, I like that. And uh, I know I always add a vignette, but I'm not going to this because I purposely want that glow and that, uh, that bright area on the side. So we'll just hit apply. Now we're back to Lightroom. I'll hit reset on our original image. And uh, let's take a look here. So that's before, after, before, after. Cool. Okay, let's keep moving on. So uh, got another neat one here. Uh, I love night shots, so this is cool. I love to work on this stuff. I'm gonna crop this one in a bit. I'm gonna make a decision. You know, what's more interesting to me? This is more interesting than this. So I'm gonna crop that in uh, quite a bit. Uh, just to get rid of most of it. We can come down here to our lens corrections panel. Uh, I always try to turn on the basic profile corrections. Uh, you can try auto upright. And I mean, I'm not feeling it. So uh, I'm actually going to back off of that one. And uh, I'm going to keep my crop the way it was. And I might just go over here to manual and just kind of rotate that around. All I'm really looking for is that building. And we could argue either way to get that to be straight, but that's all I really want from this. Uh, basics, I would just do quick whites and blacks adjustment, not gonna do too much here. Color toning, I like, I like the blue. 
I like the overall blue tone up here. We're gonna do a trick that, that I use for cityscapes all the time. Um, I'll do it inside of Perfect Effects because there's a great brush for it. But I like the overall blue. You know, normally I would warm this, but I like the blue tone up there in the sky. So we're gonna we're gonna work on this. You just watch for a second. Uh, exposure will probably just crank that up a little bit. Clarity is gonna look really nice here. It's about all I would do inside of Lightroom. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into. Uh, I know I'm only gonna use Perfect Effects, so I'll just go jump into there. Now, this photo will eat up dynamic contrast, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply the natural contrast to it. Um, I'm not even gonna reduce the opacity. I think, it's, uh, I think it's gonna look great. If I hit the backslash key, you can see that's before, that's after. So I think it works really good there. And then uh, I mentioned a little trick that I do. So I'm gonna add a layer here. I'm gonna go up in my, uh, my filters section. I'm gonna go to the adjustment brushes, okay? And then what I wanna do is I wanna find a brush called Warmer. When I have city shots, when I when I have anything that really has has night sky, I like that night sky to be that vibrant blue. But when you have the city lights, they look really good when they're warmer. And and the contrast, if you look at a color wheel, when you have the opposing colors of the blue and the warm tones, it looks really good. So I'm just gonna paint some warmth on here. In fact, we can go down. I can crank it up even more. And I can even use the perfect brush around the edges here, which is why I like to do it here, because it'll keep me uh, from bleeding out over the edges. But I'm just gonna do a quick pass with it now. Hit the right, I can key make my uh, brush a little bit bigger here. Okay, and if I turn that layer off and on, that's before. That's after. So it does give a nice warm tone to those buildings here. So I'm done. I'm just going to hit apply. Now that we're back in Lightroom, uh, I do want to very quickly show you. I know I used the uh, the uh, the brush inside of Perfect Effects. You could use the adjustment brush and get pretty close inside of Lightroom. Um, just crank up the warmth over here. So I don't want you to think you need Perfect Effect. I like it a little bit better. I like the warmth that I get from it better. Um, I like the brush because uh, the auto mask inside of Lightroom is sometimes kind of tricky. So uh, I would try to, uh, I usually try to do it in perfect effects, but if you don't have it, by all means, you could go in here and you can see really quick, that's before, that's after. So you can add some nice warmth up there. Uh, what I would also do is rather than add a vignette, I just want to darken the bottom. So I would just bring my exposure down with the graduated filter and just kind of fade it up like that. Um, to me, this is the star. Still looks good here with the leading lines and everything, but to me, that's the, uh, the big star. Um, so I would wanna go ahead and do that. And then finally, you could go to your spot removal tool here. Um, there's a few, I think there's stars in the sky. There's not enough of them. And when you turn on visualize spots, you can kind of see them. Um, I would go ahead and get rid of those because there's not enough to really make it look like a starry sky. And, uh, and at that point, they're, they're really gonna kind of look like dust spots out there. So I would go ahead and get rid of those. All right, so then let's go to our original photo, hit reset and go to the after. So let's just uh, take a quick look here. That's before and that's after. So before, after, very, very cool photo. Okay, let's take a look. Let's look at the butterfly. I know it's around here. The butterfly left, where'd it go? Whoa, here's the butterfly. Again, some people would cut this stuff out of the video, but I'm not. Uh, first off, a great shot. I mean, there's not a whole lot I would do to this. Uh, I'm gonna crop it. I think you could really just crop in on the butterfly here. Uh, might reduce some printing size for you, but I still think you can uh, you can get away with it. So I would crop in on the butterfly, some basic whites and blacks. Whites, blacks adjustment, I just hold down the option or alt key. Uh, maybe warm it just a hair. You can increase that saturation. I, again, don't go radioactive with it, but just bump that up just a little bit. And uh, that's looking pretty good. We can do some sharpening while we're right here inside of Lightroom. Radius 1.3, 1.4, looking good. Uh, if I were to finish it up, I could just do, honestly guys, that actually looks really good. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't know that we need to go too much further. If you're looking for a little bit of an added effect to it, uh, I might just pull it into uh, perfect effects. I can get a little bit of dynamic contrast um, onto the butterfly. Whenever you add dynamic contrast to blurry areas in the photo, don't forget to get your, uh, your uh, masking brush and paint it away because it's gonna put an edge around that stuff. It's gonna make it look contrasty. And that's not what you want 
um, in these areas. You pay a lot of money for lenses to blur the background. You don't want to add it back. Uh, we'll add another layer here and I'll hit it with the, uh, the famous sunshine filter. Just kind of give it a little bit more warmth, reduce the layer opacity, and uh, hit apply. I'm done. I mean, that, again, this photo is really, really good to start with. Sometimes it's that easy. I don't know that we need to, uh, to do that much more work. Maybe finish it up with just a tiny bit more of a vignette. Okay, let's go back to the original. Hit reset. That's before. That's after. Before and then after so uh great photos guys thanks so much for uh for submitting them keep them coming and uh, i'll keep the videos coming hope you enjoyed feel free to leave comments and whatnot over on the website and uh, i'll try to incorporate them into uh, the videos here i'll talk to you again very soon